Hello, Holy Family Catechism. Happy Holy Thursday to you. I want to give you a special talk today, not concerning any saint, but rather a meditation on the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what is a meditation? What does that mean? To meditate is when you take some sort of truth from our faith, whether it be um, a story from the Gospels, or um, you, you think of the Immaculate Conception, or the Blessed Trinity, and then you think about it in your mind, what it means in general, what it means to you, how beautiful is this or that truth. Afterwards, you speak to God about it, not with your mouth, but in your heart, because God is in our hearts. Remember that, for in sanctifying grace, God is in our hearts. And he's everywhere around us as well, in the whole universe. So we speak to God about these truths. We speak to God about our desires, what we want to do, ask him for his grace. We ask for forgiveness for all of our sins. We speak to him as a friend speaks to a friend very closely in our hearts. So this is what meditation is. We're going to meditate today on a painting that I'm going to show you, a very beautiful painting called The Crucifixion by um, a 14th century Italian painter named Jacobo Bellini. So before we do any meditation, we should always do two things. First of all, we place ourselves in the presence of God. Remembering that God is around us everywhere. He's in our souls by sanctifying grace. He is in the tabernacles, uh, in the churches. And then second of all, we spend a few moments humbling ourselves before God. We say, God, have mercy on me. I'm just a weak creature. And even more, I'm a sinner. I cannot do any anything without your help, God. Help me to make this meditation. Teach me your truths. Let me speak to you. Let make me worthy to speak to you, my Lord. So do that for a minute, and then we'll look at this. So here's the crucifixion of our Lord, a very grand painting. We see many people. Um, and let's go through this I'm going to explain to you who certain people are, and I want you to meditate upon these things, thinking, what must have these people thought? What did they say? What did our Lord feel? What did He think? What did He say? What did Our Lady feel? And you, then you ask yourself, what do I have? What part do I have in this? What is my part? Have I done anything good or bad? So first of all. Whenever we look at any picture of the crucifixion or any crucifix, we should always have two feelings, one of sorrow and one of confidence and gratitude. First of all, we should be sorry because we see that our Lord has hurt so much on the cross. He has been scourged, pierced with nails, whipped, he, has the, he had a crown of thorns on his head. Every, people are mocking him. We should feel very sorry for him. And we should be even more sorry because we ourselves have put him on the cross. How have we done that? We obviously weren't alive 2,000 years ago. Remember that Christ died because of our sins. So our sins have put Christ on the cross and made him suffer. They made him sad. They have made him be in anguish. So we say, Lord, have mercy on me. But besides sorrow, we should also say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for doing this great act of love. In spite of my sins, in spite of the fact that I've hurt, uh, that I've hurt you so much, Lord, you have died for me, and you will forgive me all my sins if I ask for it. You forgive me all of my, my sins in the confessional. And then you give me your own body and blood and holy communion. Thank you, Lord, for being so desirous for my salvation, for redeeming me. This is what we should say whenever we see the crucifix. Now, let's look at the people in the background of this photo. Who, who are they? We see a group of soldiers on the left side and the right side with many spears. And they're dressed up in armor. 
and they're on horses. They have flags. What do the flags say? They say S P Q R. This means Rome, the Roman Empire. So these soldiers are soldiers of the Roman Empire. These are the ones who helped crucify our Lord at the command of Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. Now we look on the bottom right of the photo and we see some men dressed in hoods with long beards and gowns. Who are these men? Well, they seem to be the chief priests of the Jews and the Pharisees. These were the men who yelled, crucify him, crucify him. They wanted our Lord killed because they were envious and jealous of him. So basically they shouted at Pontius Pilate. They got a lot of people to shout at him to crucify him. And then Pontius Pilate, because he was a weak, weak and a coward, he let them have their way. And then he sent his Roman soldiers out, who you see in the background, and they led our Lord to be crucified. What a very sad thing. Our Lord, who's so good, is hanging in the middle of all these people with all these spears. Why do, you, why do you even need spears with Christ? Christ is harmless. But yet they brought all these spears, treating him like a criminal. And we see the chief priests and the Pharisees. Looks like they're plotting or mocking him, talking amongst themselves, saying, this is not the Son of God. They're saying, they, they're saying, he thought that he, he could save others, but he can't save himself. They're mocking our Lord. How much does this hurt our Lord's sacred heart to see his own creatures mock him and put him on the cross? Have we ever spoken badly about our Lord and hurt him by the things we said or disrespected him? Have mercy on me, Jesus. In the middle, standing to the right of our Lord, we see a man with a, uh, a stick, and on it's like a, a blob, that is a sponge. And um, this is the man who took the sponge, filled it with gall and vinegar, and then gave it, gave it to our Lord to drink, because our Lord said, I am thirsty. Standing to the bottom left of our Lord, who do we see? We see a man kneeling with uh, some armor on, and he has a spear in his hand. Who is this man? This is the Roman soldier named Longinus. Longinus is his name. He is the one who pierced the side of our Lord. So this painting basically takes place just a little, a few moments after he pierced the side of our Lord because we see the blood starting to flow forth from our Lord's side, the blood on the water. And we see on the tip of his spear, blood. Now, notice that he's kneeling. Why is he kneeling? If he's a Roman soldier who hurt Christ, why is he kneeling to him? Well, tradition has it that this Roman soldier converted to the Catholic faith. And it makes sense because if you read the Gospels carefully, it mentions a certain Roman soldier who, after our Lord died, after he saw the, the earthquake and the sky get dark, after he heard our Lord yell very loudly when he died, this soldier said, this truly was the Son of God. This is perhaps the same, the same man, Longinus and he converted to the Catholic faith. Now he's a saint, Saint Longinus. So how beautiful is this to see him kneeling at the feet of our Lord? We learn from this that even though we've hurt our Lord by our many sins, our Lord will forgive us if we ask him. He forgives us in confession. What happens in confession? We confess our sins and the water comes out of Christ's side and cleanses us of all of our, the blood and water cleanses us of all of our sins. So basically what happens in confession is the same thing that happens in this picture with the centurion, the Roman soldier. We kneel before our Lord, he pours his precious blood on us and forgives our sins every time we go to confession. Never forget this. Now to the right of our Lord, 
And to the right of the man um, holding this uh, the sponge, we see a man with a halo. He looks like he's in very, very great anguish and sadness. Who is this man? This is John, the beloved apostle. All the other apostles ran away and they never came back for the crucifixion. Saint John, even though he ran away, he decided to come back and be with our Lord at the crucifixion. He was the only one who was standing at the foot of the cross. So here he is portrayed, looking very, very sad, very, very, uh, in a very anguishing mood, because he sees his Lord, his Master, and his friend, Jesus, on the cross. Everyone's mocking him. The blood is coming out for, from him. It's a very sad and stressful event. St. John is very sad as well. Now, he's sad for another reason. Why is that? Notice that he's not only looking towards our Lord, but he seems to be looking somewhere else. He's looking across the painting to this group of women with halos above their heads. There's four women here, and they're all supporting one woman. Who are they? Present at our Lord's crucifixion were holy women, such as Mary Magdalene, Mary of Cleophas, and a sister of Our Lady. Now, nowhere does it say that Our Lady had any siblings. Therefore, we take the word sister here to mean some more distant relative, such as a cousin. This was the Hebrew way of speaking. They would call their distant relatives brothers and sisters. Finally, the most blessed virgin, the mother of our Lord, was present at the cross, standing there, offering herself up with our Lord. And this is the woman who is being supported by the other three, the one who looks like she's almost going to fall over and faint. This is the Blessed Virgin Mary. Look how anguish, how much anguish she has, especially on her face. All the other women have color in their faces, but the Blessed Virgin's face is gray because she had such great sorrow. Even a, a spiritual sword pierced her soul at this moment when our Lord was on the cross. Imagine how difficult for a, for a mother to see her son suffer. What about if her son is God? How difficult must that be? So the Blessed Virgin was very sad in this moment. We cannot comprehend how sad she was. We should be like Saint John, who is looking at her and feeling sorry for her. We should say to Our Lady, let me suffer with you, let me comfort you, let me help you in, in your sorrow. You know, just if, if our own mother were crying, we would go to her and say, Mother, what's wrong? Let me help you, let me comfort you. We should say the same thing to the Blessed Virgin Mary. We should say, Blessed Virgin Mary, let me comfort you in your sorrows. Let me make you feel better. Let me suffer with you. So, Zooming back out, this is the grand painting of the crucifixion by Jacobo Bellini. Remember, I'll repeat what I said at the beginning. Whenever we see the crucifixion or a crucifix, we should have two feelings. We should have sorrow, saying, I'm sorry, Lord, for what happened to you and for what I've done to you. And then we should say, thank you, Lord. I give gratitude to you for dying for me because you love me and you want to save me. So may God bless you all and help, help you have a very, very blessed um, Good Friday. Pray a lot. Don't spend time on other things that aren't necessary. Pray a lot on Good Friday and meditate upon these things that I told you. God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.